In June of 2015, the spring runoff was in full swing when we resumed our work. We were still using the hydropower from the spring-fed system and undertook the process of preparing all the wiring for the new system. Wiring from our 480 volt transformer was run to the house wiring in anticipation of moving the system. We were now ready to take the equipment from our first system which had now supplied us with nearly 144,000 kilowatt hours of power since it was originally installed in 1996 and move it to the new powerhouse where it would provide even more power. We would be switching from our direct drive setup to one that would use belts required by the different parameters of the new water source. The disassembly was difficult and took a good amount of effort and time, but it allowed us to examine all the essential parts of the turbine and to provide a new coat of protective paint to everything. Once everything had been moved to the new powerhouse and set in place, we undertook the accurate alignment and fitting of all the components. The output of the alternator was rewired to output 480 volts and all the wiring was connected. Now finally, after more than two years of planning and effort, we again filled the penstock pipeline and pressurized the system. We allowed air to escape both the air vent at the crest of the hill and also at the intake weir. With the pressure reading 96 PSI in the powerhouse, we knew the penstock was full. It was mid-June of 2015 and we started up the system. The resulting power was a vast improvement to what the first system had provided. Initially, we only ran the system on the water that was running through the meadow. We installed a rubber liner in the pool above the intake weir to better seal the weir dam from leaks. Several other improvements were made to the overall system, including a window on the turbine, a thermostatic controlled fan to cool the powerhouse, and a belt guard for the V-belts. We also installed barbed wire on the hillside by the bridge to prevent animals from further eroding the supports of the bridge. We were now harnessing a continuous 35 amps of power, or about 100 kilowatt hours per day. But that was just with the water in the meadow. A new plan was formed to reestablish the diversion of water from the creek. Six-inch flexible poly pipe was installed connecting the collection area in the creek with the remaining section of pipe which had not been destroyed by the yearly spring snowmelt surge. We decided that the best approach for this diversion would be to remove the pipe for the period in June when the spring melt waters peak. The unstable condition of the hillside and the changing erosion caused by the force of the water each year make it difficult to expect that any permanent structure would withstand these variable changes. We were successful in diverting water to the meadow and this increased the capacity of our system to over 60 amps of continuous AC power. Winter is when we need the most power and have increased the useful loads on the system to heat our house with a series of baseboard heaters. Additionally, this year we refurbished a salvaged outdoor hot tub to put excess power to productive use. We have made several modifications of the intake system for the creek diversion to collect the water for the meadow. Our best solution has been a vortex tank, which is submerged below the surface of the water at all times, thus preventing any air from entering our flexible pipe and preventing any airlock problems. We have also made several modifications to the intake at the weir dam. Different screens have been used to filter any debris from entering the penstock. Winter is harsh here and freezing can be a problem. We finally settled on installing an engineered Coenda intake box which has performed with no need for maintenance and very little cleaning since it was installed. It has now been five years from the time we decided to upgrade our system and it runs constantly with almost no attention required to harness an enormous amount of power year-round from the creek. 
To date, the system has produced 250,000 kilowatt hours of power, and it just keeps running 24-7, 365 days a year. There's a great deal more detail available to view in all the segments of this series. The point of putting this segment together was to give a sense of how much time, care, and effort went into the creation of this renewable source. It is our hope that in some small way this project was an attempt to lead by example. Creating your own off-grid hydropower is not only achievable, but a complete joy to live with once it has been accomplished. If you will click like below, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with others, it will help guide the algorithms that rate content on the internet to provide this information to more and more people.